Hey everyone, um, my name is Corbin and I work for Hermes Corporation. We are a startup based in Atlanta building hypersonic jets and we found that it is advantageous to use uh, Julia in our, some of our workflows. Some of you may have gone to the talk by the uh, Brazilian gentleman uh, from the Brazilian Space Agency yesterday who kind of went over how they use Julia in their workflows. Um, for real-time testing of their hardware, and this is actually very similar. So it was pretty encouraging to see uh, multiple people finding the same types of use cases. Uh, for some quick background on, on what we're building, um, we're uh, endeavoring long-term to produce commercial hypersonic aircraft, and uh, intermediately, currently, we're building some uh, dual-use products for uh, initially for government customers, and we're in the prototyping phase. So we are building the uh, hypersonic aircraft that you see in the middle, the really small one, it's called Quarter Horse. Um, and then we're gonna scale up from there and build uh, Dark Horse, which is a little bit bigger on the right side of the screen. And then the long-term vision is to uh, have a hypersonic commercial travel with our um, future aircraft Halcyon on uh, the left side. And the, uh, the enabling technology or one of the enabling technologies here is our Chimera um, combined turbojet and ramjet engine. Um, so we call it a turbine-based combined cycle engine because it transitions from a uh, turbojet with an afterburner to a ramjet at uh, around Mach 2.5 or Mach 3. And we think that that will enable us to accelerate to Mach 5. And here's a photo of the engine undergoing some testing. We um, also have a, a test site in Atlanta where we run a lot of these tests. As you can imagine, uh, good software testing is uh, very important for these um, types of endeavors. So uh, that's why um, we've chosen to use Julia. Here is um, a picture of our factory. Um, we're in Atlanta, and a lot of stuff we do is pretty vertically integrated, so we're doing a lot of our own um, manufacturing in-house. So uh, why did we decide to use Julia? Well, some of the driving requirements um, that, you know, you the, the two-language problem that you hear come up uh, often around here. Um, so running as fast as compiled languages and in real time, um, easily interfacing with external compiled libraries. Uh, and uh, uh, an underrated but uh, very important one for us is that it's uh, accessible to engineers without much programming experience because we get a lot of aerospace engineers coming to work for us and um, they uh, often don't have a computer science background. And some of the activities we do, uh, in-house package development, um, simulation software for our vehicle physics engine, um, design and analysis tools for control systems, things like con uh, controlsystems.jl, convex.jl, um, and the interface with our flight code. So our development and test environment at the simplest level, um, I wanna be able to test our uh, C++ embedded code just locally on my laptop. So we call that a software in the loop test where uh, our, our simulation is entirely uh, written in Julia and uh, our embedded software is written in C++, but of course we don't compile the executable and test it locally. We uh, compile it as a library and then use C call from within Julia in order to uh, call the various uh, control functions that are uh, written in C++. Um, and also the C++ debugger works by launching um, the Julia executable or by running the simulation in Julia. Um, and then we also have a flight deck that we uh, use for pilot training and engineer, uh, test engineer training. So we uh, network the simulation together with a, a separate entity where um, we can run through um, actual kind of real life test scenarios. Um, and the next layer of fidelity is hardware in the loop testing. So this is where we connect our simulation to uh, actual avionics and sensing hardware that's on the vehicle. And uh, that looks like our, our flight computer with our actual uh, embedded executable, um, our data acquisition system, our inertial measurement unit, uh, or an emulated one, um, our uh, GNSS receiver, a navigation computer, and a radar altimeter. So a lot of the actual hardware that goes on the vehicle. Um, and the interface is uh, written in Julia um, to these five items in particular, these four items in particular, a, a timing card, where we use C call, um, a GNSS simulator, so a device that simulates where uh, GPS satellites are in space, 
and um, gives us data based on where our simulation tells us the vehicle is. Um, we have a, a serial card for um, inertial measurement unit emulation um, and also um, from national instruments from their, their data acquisition software and they have a, a package in Julia that allows us to interface with um, signal spoofing hardware. So uh, when the simulation tells us that a pressure transducer is reading 100 PSI, that actual signal is produced in the uh, NI DAC and uh, spoofed in, in a way that is, is it's so, such that it is read realistically at however many volts that pressure transducer is putting out. And, and then the uh, next level of uh, testing is networking that again with the flight deck, which I um, haven't shown a picture of this yet, but is basically a shipping container that we built the uh, pilot station inside of. Um, and we'll be testing, uh, rolling out a vehicle onto the tarmac later this year to start testing these fully integrated systems. So just to give you an idea of what uh, we do simulation wise, um, nothing too fancy, just a, a typical kind of aircraft simulation, um, 50 or so states will probably, you know, double by the time we're done writing all of our models. Um, the important part is that we can run it in real time with the hardware in the loop um, structure at about uh, 100 uh, or 1000 hertz. Um, in order to do this, we had to almost entirely eliminate garbage collection. Um, the, the vehicle will crash if the garbage collector runs while we're uh, doing this. So uh, one of the main challenges we faced is uh, eliminating memory allocations in our simulation. Um, I think I have a, a slide where uh, maybe I go over that. Yeah, so um, it's, it's a very ad hoc process. Um, we use track allocations in order to uh, understand where attention is needed. Um, but it's, there's a lot of uh, guess and check. We haven't found any robust tools for um, you know, type stability, traceability um, types of analyses. So a lot of guess and check there. We have not been able to eliminate all of our memory allocations from our simulation, but we've eliminated most of them such that the garbage collector is not called while we run you know, a, a mission duration of like one hour or something where the vehicle takes off, accelerates to Mach 5, and then returns to the ground. Um, so most issues are with uh, array allocations within the simulation loop, and a lot of that can be addressed using S vectors and uh, non-type stable code within the simulation loop. And, and again, just kind of ad hoc use of tools in order to try to address those things. And finally, last uh, discussion item is we tried to compile a Julia code on embedded systems. Um, that would be really cool if it worked out, because I think that would speed up development even a bit more. Um, it sounds like maybe Rust is another uh, candidate here. And we, uh, we, did, we did this successfully, but uh, we were unable to continue pursuing it just because of lack of insight and some memory allocations. And uh, that's consistent with stuff that I've heard from uh, a lot of you all and your experience with these types of things. I think uh, that might be about all I've got. Uh, thanks for attending and I'll take uh, some questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, one question, did you, did you think about using uh, Julia for the embedded part as opposed to just for the simulations? Because there are people that are using Python, that abomination for embedded software. So I do not see why not Julia. Um, yeah, so the, the embedded part was attempted and it, it was done successfully. We just didn't have enough insight into uh, memory allocations in order to be confident that it would work on a, a, a vehicle that will crash if there's like a delay in the timing loop. We have to run at, you know, at least uh, 100 hertz uh, very consistently. Were you able to get pretty far just with packages in the general registry, or do you have in-house uh, packages as well for this stuff? Um, it's yeah, mostly general registry. Uh, our in-house stuff is just like very specific to working with our model databases, um, and everything else is uh, general. All right, I like 
for all of us to thank our speaker. Thank you.